Hey, gang, this is Carl White, and you are listening to Loan Officer Edge, sponsored by the fine people over at the Scotsman Guide. And um, this is our top producer panel. Uh, we've been doing this series for a little while. And today we have Mr. Dustin Rosenberg and Jonathan Yu uh, out of the official center of the earth itself, Los Angeles. How are you guys doing? Good, good. How are you? all <clears throat> So y'all, uh, you guys work for uh, uh, Convey Home Loans. Is that the right place? Convoy? Yeah, we, we actually, yeah, we actually own Convoy. Oh, what wonderful! So, are y'all? Um, how does that work? Are y'all are y'all partners on it, or is is one lead over the other, or how does that work? Yeah, we're we're both partners, owners of Convoy, but we're also the top producers. We're Funny broker, how that works. Owner, producers, yeah, all that. I get, I get it. I get it. Bottle, bottle washer. Yeah, I, I, I can, I yeah. can, I can relate to that. I can relate to that. Hey, so we call this the top producers panel. So let's just kind of start with there. Like, you know, what are you guys doing? And then we'll break down. How, like, how are you doing it? Maybe what does your team look like? Uh, kind of pull back the curtains a little bit. So, uh, uh, what, what kind of, what kind of volume? Uh, so as we're recording this, it's the middle of July, uh, two thousand twenty-four. Um, how you guys doing? We're doing well. We're, we're uh, having a fun start to 2024. Um, Convoy does focus mainly, uh, I'd say 90% of our business is on non-QM and, and DSCR. And obviously being in Los Angeles, a lot of luxury real estate as well. Um, you know, we'll still do the conventional FHA VA loans as well, but it's not our, our main chunk of business, if you will. Um, I think I, we haven't pulled the first half of 2024 numbers yet, but on average, we're doing anywhere between what 60 or 70 million a month. Um, you know, as a company, not just as me and John individually, but as a company. Yeah, and and what's the uh, what what percentage of uh, what percentage of that is just you guys versus the rest of the company? I'd probably say 70% is probably us um, versus the rest of the company. So like 50 million-ish a month, give or take? Yeah, give or take. Yeah. Good numbers, man. Yeah. So congratulations, yeah. first mean, of all. I mean, especially in this market. Thank you. Thank you. Dude, in, in any market. Like, you know, it's not like, well, 50 million is never easy. Some years it's harder than others, but I, we can't say it's easy. You certainly don't get there by chance or by luck. It's because of doing something. So, uh you know, the first question comes to my mind is like, how, like, how are you doing it? So obviously when we started the company, like officially, I think three and a half years ago or something. And um, mm. when that market was there, right. Think back three and a half years, everyone was chasing conventional FHA VA loans at like the twos, ones, <clears> 3%, excuse me, you know, range. And when Dustin and I started the company, we decided, Hey, our main priority actually has to be, the untapped part of the broker market and real estate market, which is mostly investors and um, luxury real estate, right? So that's been kind of our our target from when we started. And um, we kind of worked out all the kings, went through all the motions, um, obviously failed a lot at the same time um, to kind of dig our heels into the investor and luxury market niche. And that's kind of how we've been um, doing more and more while obviously the rest of the market has been struggling a bit more because anyone that was more refinance focused on conventional FHA or VA took a big hit. Um, but in the recent market, you know, because we've been doing more and more volume, we've been getting attention from Wall Street and attention from all these other investors that, you know, most brokers would sell to. Um, and a lot of them started reaching out to us and partnering with us to kind of help grow our portfolio of loans. Um, so that's kind of how we've been growing and growing and obviously word of mouth and you know, if you look us up online, we're we're pretty much everywhere uh, on the internet. Um, so that's kind of all been factoring into our uh, our recent you know climb to success. Yeah, good for you, man. So how do you get how do you get um, how do you get like I don't know, just say your your last twenty closings. How did you meet those people? Are are you are you do you work off of referral partners, consumer direct, social media? Like how are you bringing most of it in? Yeah, I mean, fortunately for us, not going to a lot of our business just comes from referrals slash past clients uh, that we've worked with. And given our, uh, you know, client clientele, I should say, I'd say then 70% of it's investor 
space. So real estate investors, right? That when you look at the average, let's just say real estate investor, they're normally doing two, three, four, five, sometimes 10 or 20, you know, transactions a year. Um, and when you compare that to, you know, your first time home buyer or somebody that's possibly getting a VA or FHA loan, you may not speak to that person, unfortunately, for another six years. So when we started Convoy, like John alluded to, we, we knew that the you know ability to get financing as a real estate investor was pretty difficult and limited going the conventional route. And we wanted to kind of be your one-stop shop for real estate investors. And it, it's a it's a beautiful uh, you know spider web of your name and Convoy's name being able to be spread when you do one good deal or one good transaction with one real estate investor, because believe it or not, they have a lot of other colleagues that are in the exact same boat or mm-hmm. go to the meetups, you know, once a month with, or have their own blog online or Facebook group. And you can get one shout out from one of them. And, you know, a lot of people will be calling for the same services. Yeah. I, I saw, I saw, and, and you might have a better or, or not better, a more accurate stat than I do, but I saw a thing the other day. And if I remember right, it was something like 30%, 33%, something like that, of all home loans uh, in the last 12 months uh, have been to investors. Or, or I'm sorry, 30% of all purchases, home purchases, were investors. And I is that kind of the is that about the same number that you you've been hearing hearing too, John? Yeah, absolutely. And that's you know, we're probably 29% of that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what it sounds like. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, that's that, Definitely investors have been um, coming out of the woods a little more because obviously right now what what's required is capital, right? So a lot of people that are buying right now all have capital to be able to purchase. Yeah. Um, if you don't have capital, then again, like Dustin said, first time home buyers and such, they're not they're not as active in the market because they get priced out for investors. They're always looking for deals. And the people that are hunting for deals in this market are obviously going to be the successful ones versus, um, you know, the homeowner that wants to go in there and live in the house, right? Because the investors are strictly looking at the at the money. And the way that we explain it to most clients is that it's just the cost of capital, right? It's just a number on the spreadsheet. As long as it works on that spreadsheet and it fits your, your kind of parameters, you're going to be able to successfully have that transaction happen. And I think that's what's increased the number of investors trying to buy in the market. So, you know, you said something uh, kind of tongue in cheek, but maybe a little not when I said that 30% of all purchases are investors and you said, where well, we're doing 29% of it, uh, or 29% of that 30. Um, you know, there's actually a serious side of that. You're, you're, you likely see a lot less competition in that market than say FHA or VA. Why do you think most loan officers kind of shy away or at least they don't pursue the investor market. Why do you think it's kind of the ignored section where you guys going in there, you know, are doing exceptionally well, helping a lot of people? I, I think a big part of it might be you just don't have a whole lot of competition. Not that you're not awesome, but there's just not near as much competition. Why not? No, I, I think you nailed it right on the head. I I, I don't know what the statistic is, but um, I would say of all of the mortgage companies, mortgage brokers, mortgage lenders, you know, in the country. I, I want to say probably 85, 90% of them focus strictly on conventional FHA VA, right? They can do it um, in terms of, you know, your non-QM loans or the DSCR loans that everyone says they can, they can do. But what, what differentiates us is that, like John actually alluded, I think in his, his first statement is that we are dealing directly with investors that buy these notes on Wall Street. So on a conventional loan, those are all going to be, you know, give or take, uh, if you're shopping as a consumer, maybe 0.1 different or a thousand dollars difference in fees, because uh, everybody's getting their milk from the same cow, right? It's being insured by Fannie or it's being insured yeah. by Ginny Mae product. Um, when you're doing a DSCR loan specifically for investors, like your relationship, your track record, your history with that specific fund, they're going to give you a better deal. That you know, for example. Um, they would give somebody that's never closed a DSCR loan with them, right? So if they, they get a package from Convoy, your typical, let's just say $1 million DSCR purchase, 
that Wall Street fund that we're selling to is going to give us a little bit better deal because they they know us. They know what we can do. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you have a brand new loan officer just sending it to that same investor, they're going to be a little bit more, you know, risk uh, sensitive and probably give a little bit worse, you know, pricing. But, you know, the price that we can get doesn't, I guess, answer completely the question on why don't other loan officers try and do this. It's, it's not that it's not uh, humanly or physically possible for anybody to do it. But the hardest thing to get is getting the clients. Did they go out and get them in terms of their brand, their company, their own, you know, loan officer, you know, name out to investors? Because investors, uh, you know, they're, they're very picky in working with who they believe can get the job done. Mm-hmm. They've got a tight timeline. You know, they've got, uh, you know, in terms of a lot of them have a project they're working on that might be a three month fix and flip type product or a six month flip fix and flip product. And they might be paying 10, 11, 12%. And, you know, they don't want to risk going with somebody that can't get it done. And now all of a sudden, you know, they're either on an extension or they're paying 12% for an extra two or three months. So they, they feel going with, you know, somebody that's established themselves as a real estate investor type lender or a investment property lender is a lot more safe for their business. Um, and that's what it comes down to is that we've really made the, you know, leaps and bounds. I, I firmly believe amongst our competition to make sure that we marketed ourselves to clients that are investors directly, but also online. We do weekly podcasts with, um, you know, a real estate investor kind of YouTube channel, if you will. Um, but we're also always on a lot of different Facebook groups going to realtors office. Like John went to one this morning. That's got. 150 agents that strictly focus on investment properties, right? We aren't going to your, not to say it wouldn't, but the, you know, Keller Williams or the ones that strictly mm-hmm. focus on, you know, first time home buyers. We're, we're targeting the market that we want and driving business in that way. How'd you get interested in the, um, I, I guess we'd call it a niche, uh, the niche of investors. Uh, like how did, how did, were you sitting there one day going, you know, there seems to be like everybody and his brother's fighting off of this one crowd and, there's a big, huge, empty room of business. Like, was it was it a realization like that, or are you personally involved in uh, investing yourself? Like, how, where did where did it come from? Yeah, I mean, we are active real estate investors um, first and foremost. So, I think that's what also sets us apart from other uh, people that want to get in the market. Is we're not telling our clients to do something that we wouldn't do ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. We're buying with the same programs, working the same products um, to do it, but. To answer your question, uh, three and a half years ago, we did come to that realization because everyone was crowding into the conventional space. And again, we were doing that and it was fine. But Dustin and I have both been in the industry, in the industry for over 10 years now. Um, and that kind of experience of we've already been doing conventional FHA, VA for seven plus years. Let's, you know, we have to find a niche into something that we can set ourselves apart in. Um, and also be able to help most clients in, I think, um, just because we saw all these uh, Fannie Mae guidelines come through that were adjustments, LLPAs, um, for those listening, obviously know what that are, that started hitting investors with worse rates and worse terms and worse pricing. And investors were the only ones getting beat up. And we're like, there has to be another avenue where investors don't get beat up. And that's kind of where we focused on. We, we looked for that avenue. Um, found those avenues that where the investors actually get the same terms as conventional loans, but are able to continuously expand their portfolio with less resistance, right? We're not asking for blood type, right? We're asking for give us your experience and your liquidity and we can see what we can make work, right? So that's kind of how we fell, like not fell into niche, but kind of searched for the niche Mm -hmm. and got in there. Um, It was just looking for the need where everyone else was kind of too busy shooting fish in a barrel. We were out there really walking upstream, you know, trying to find that one golden fish, you know, to kind of help us start in this, in this avenue. Yeah. So, so you get a lot of your business. You you mentioned something a few minutes ago that one good thing about the working with the investor is that they might buy three, four, five or more houses per year, as opposed to one every six years or seven years how do you market like like say if i if i'm an investor and i do one loan with you do you do you market to me like on an ongoing basis or do you just do i just remember to call you guys or do you do you stay in front of me or do you 
just get a fear, fierce following without even trying? Well, you know, it, it, we would be lying if we said that we wished every client would just always call us first, uh, even if we did a deal for them a year ago. But truth be told, I, I read something that maybe you might have put out with, with Ben Johnstone about retaining, um, you know, referral business. But ultimately, if you're not staying in front of the past clients that you've worked with, you're mm -hmm. shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. Um, because, yes, we have like opt in email campaigns. We have uh, a lot of our assistants always following up with our past clients, just checking in to see how they're doing. You know, the, the best, I think, way, though, that might be too old school, but really isn't uh, is, you know, after every loan closing, we, we personally will handwrite you know, thank you notes and, and make sure that they have our business cards because that goes a long way in, in today's day and age. I think other than just sending a, you know, once a month kind of blast email on where your rates are at. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, any, any loan officer that's listening to this, if you're not staying in front of your past clients from a month ago, a year ago, or two years ago, there's a good chance John and I might run across them and, you know, do the exact same thing. So you, you got nothing personal, but, uh, Hey, yeah. this is how it works. Right. Yeah. 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 You, if you don't want any, uh, if you don't want anybody to move in, uh, to your territory, just make sure that you're patrolling your territory, like, like any winner does. So, um, uh, entry. So when you, so when you're, when you're following up with your, uh, past database, it, is that like a, a weekly or bi-weekly or once a month? Like do you have a particular thing that you do? No, so we we normally send like a, a once a month, you know, kind of email blast, um, you know, just on new products or new rates. But we have, you know, jo no secret, John and I aren't doing the volume that we're doing just with our own selves, right? We we have three assistants, right? We've got our own processors, and part of the day, every single day, is for our assistants to call at least for one or two hours a day. Mm -hmm. all of our past clients they're not going to get through the whole list every day right yeah but they get a call probably once a month once every three weeks from us just checking in saying you know how are you doing anything we can help with your current loan or new projects you've got going on um because we feel that you know if you're not doing that like i said earlier there might be another john you twin that's going to catch our client and try and persuade him to go with them yeah. instead of us so the, these are like uh, business development reps that you have calling or uh, what we call, what I always call a BDR. Is that, is their primary, do they do other things like process the files too, or is their primary thing generating new business? Their primary thing is just generating new business, making mm -hmm. sure our calendars are full, reaching out to our previous clients, you know, just not even talking about the loan, just catching up with them, mm -hmm. um, making sure that they know that we're thinking of them. Because, mm -hmm. um, Believe it or not, like Dustin and I, we've closed like thousands of clients in the last, you know, three and a half years, right, with, from doing so much volume. But we still mostly remember a lot of the clients that we closed and finished with because through the process, right, and this is a big thing, we build a personal relationship with them, right, to make them feel comfortable to be able to call us whenever they're in a situation or even if it's a bind and they decided, hey, you guys might not be the best uh, person to do this loan, but shoot, now I'm stuck, right? Someone else messed up. Can you step in and help, right? We want to be able to kind of leave that door open, especially for our relationships because um, mm -hmm. we're building that type of, of relationship with them because we want our clients to get the best deal at the end of the day, right? I think that's what also kind of allows us to push for um, being, you know, jumping up so high in the Scotsman rank is at the end of the day, we are always looking and truly, truly looking for the best interest of our client. And we, we a lot of times, there's been so many times where we've done loans for free. We've done loans for, you know, very low cost, just because we want to make sure that the relationships and, and the loans are favorable for our clients. Right. So mm -hmm. I think that's a, a special factor that we're not profit chasing. And I think that allows us to kind of set ourselves apart from everyone else. And the clients mm -hmm. that actually do work with us understand that, okay, these guys are providing more value than the dollars that I'm, they're being paid or whatnot. And, that's what makes them kind of remember us. And that's why we remember most of our clients that we funded the thousands and thousands of them just because of the personal relationship we that we have with them, you know, so we stay in front of them on birthdays, um, you know, text them on anniversaries, text them on this, um, just call them, catch up with them. If we ever have a moment of time um, just to see how they're doing right at the end of the day. And then that'll obviously lead to, Oh, well, what's, what's happening with the market right now. It's usually the question they ask, how are rates doing? What are yada? And then you get to kind of 
as the LO start have their brain moving a little bit with, okay, this is the pathway that I might be exploring that I might have wanted to do, but you're all you're doing is opening the door for them, showing them the way where you're like, hey, you know, this is where the market is, this is where I'm seeing a lot of clients doing right now. And this might be a good avenue for if you wanted to jump in, obviously, no pressure, you do what you want to do. But you know, this is where a lot of people are doing and it might be in your favor. Oh, actually, I saw I remember we talked about this deal that we did for you guys two years ago. Looks like that place has a lot of equity. And now maybe if you wanted to tap into a HELOC or something to make your investing happen, you know, kind of like creating opportunities that way where most people are just like, hey, how are you doing? Good, good. All right. Bye. You know, we're kind of just, hey, um, kind of redeveloping the relationship every single time we talk. about. Mm. So you guys have had a very rapid rise uh, for sure. Um, what what's one thing you think? Hey, the the and you've given a lot of stuff here already. But if I say, hey, what's the one thing that's really propelled you to such high level so rapidly? What would you say that one thing is? I think just keeping things personable, right, with clients that that they're not they're not numbers on paper. They're not just um, mm-hmm. you know they're not just digits. They are not dollar signs. It's actual money that affects their livelihood. And and you have to look at yourself as a tool that they have in their belt to further their um, their net worth, right? And a lot of times that net worth, like anyone that's investing right now, the majority of the people that are investing right now, they're not investing right now for just themselves, right? They're investing for their families. They're investing for generational wealth. Like you get to be a part of that, right? So you have to make sure that the relationships are personable in the sense of, you're not just looking at them for a quick profit because who cares if you make an extra one grand, two grand, three grand, even 10 grand, 20 grand from one client, right? It doesn't matter if that client has a bad taste in their mouth and doesn't want to work with you ever again and hates your guts, right? The only way that you grow is by having a personal relationship with them where you're like, hey, I'm, I'm actually honored to be a part of your generational wealth growing journey. And this is what I want to do. I want to just not be here for right now but I want to be here 30 years later when you're looking to have your kids start investing as well. Right. And I want to be your guy that when that happens, and that's kind of how we've um, I think set ourselves apart again. And I think what really uh, will help people grow their business more is, you know, adding in that human factor because so many companies have become technologically, you know, advanced and they just click buttons. Everyone's shopping online, clicking a button and whatnot that people are starting to, lose the touch of the human touch, right? Which I think is real estate at the end of the day, despite it being numbers on paper and addresses, is a human business, right? Because you want to be able to trust the people that you're dealing a lot of money with. It's not at the end of the day, if you're able to click a computer and whatever that works, like try sitting on customer service and calling the 800 number and sitting there trying to talk to a mortgage company that's maybe a really big one that you have no one to talk to, right? You're going to sit there for an hour trying to speak to someone about a problem you're having. And at the end of the day, they're not going to care about it. So us being there, yeah, you know, sometimes you're going to have to pay us or, you know, we may cost more, cost less, it doesn't matter. It, it's a personable thing where you're like, hey, I'm actually here for you. Like Dustin and I are up till 1.32 a.m. Sometimes we're on calls till that time because clients are on some type, different time zone. They're across the country or in a different country and they want to chat and they're having some concerns. They're having trouble sleeping even, right? We take the time to be like, okay. Let me talk to you, explain the situation so that you can go to sleep, right? So that you can have peace and go to sleep and be okay and know that we're going to handle this, right? So that's kind of, I think, a big aspect as well that people are lacking these days that I see in the industry. It's not just the dollar. It's the personal relationship with the client. Mm. So if you were to, um, sounds like you've done done a lot of things right. Tell me one thing that, God, boy, did we really screw this up. <laughs> um, you want me to start? Yeah, yeah. That, that is a tough one thing that if, if we were to go back in time. Um, and, you know, I, I don't regret it because uh, you hear the, the phrase a lot in life that, you know, you, you learn a lot more when you fail than when you succeed, right? And sure. I don't know if it was a failure, but and there was no way for us to do this differently. It was learning essentially how the DSCR non-QM buying and purchasing and selling of loans on the back end really worked. 
Um, because when we came in and we started, like John said, everybody was kind of, you know, just targeting and going after the two and a half percent, 2.75 conventional refi, VA streamline, FHA streamline, et cetera. Um, but also at that time, rates on the DSCR product investment properties were at three and a quarter. Okay. And what you don't know is the average consumer, even as I believe most loan officers may not know is, you know, when you're executing trades, you're executing trades in real time with where the market is on Wall Street. And learning that side of being like a, what we call in the industry, a correspondent and understanding that side better so that we could have maybe not taken as much of a loss versus maybe being profitable on these trades is probably the one thing, you know, I wish we knew better, but once again, there's no way for us to know that. And it's only from, you know, going through it and, and learning not to do it again. Hmm. Is there something I should have asked you here today that I didn't? What, what, what questions should I have asked and, and didn't? I, no, you, you're, you're the, uh, you're the man running the show, but we, we do these a lot, like I said, and I think we, we got a good, um, you know, idea, at least from the listener's point of view on what we do, what Convoy does. And, you know, we would love to help anybody out that had questions for us directly, but um, I, I think we did it pretty well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, I think operationally, what might help people too is uh, making sure that they have good processors, right? I think um, that's the one thing that, and, and like defining what a processor does they're not just paper pushers for us. Um, a lot of our processing, our processors are um, collecting conditions, also you know communicating with clients, updating clients, kind of moving the loan along, helping us move that along as well. Um, and they're all NMLS licensed, right? So they're all licensed to do everything as well. So I think having that, uh, making sure that you have a solid processing team, um, like Dustin said earlier, it's not just Dustin and myself that's you know funding all this volume. We have a lot of help. Um, because it's physically not possible, right, to do all that without the help. So I think uh, for people listening, like, make sure, even if it's one extra solid processor, two extra solid processors, mm -hmm. make sure you have solid processing on the team because they're the ones that are going to help you get more deals done so that you can focus on bringing in more volume. Yeah, they'll, they'll, a good support team will make you break you. There's no question about that. So good stuff. Well, guys, I appreciate you being here, man. This was uh, outstanding. Um um, I love, I love the niche that you're working on. I think, uh, I think a lot of people are just afraid of the investor thing, thinking that, well, gosh, what if the investor knows more than me, right? What if they, and, and likely they are right. Just being, you know, it's some sort of them, you know, they're, they're pros, especially when you're first getting started in this, they are. And to blaze into there and, uh, you know, one of my favorite sayings, and I, I wish I remember who told me this. Uh, they said, Carl, the secret to success is risk looking stupid, risk looking stupid. Not that you guys are, look, but you get the idea behind that saying. And I think, man, there's a lot of wisdom in that is, is be okay. Uh, yeah, be okay to, uh, and you mentioned it earlier, be okay to fail, be okay uh, to get stumped sometimes on the questions because then you'll know the answer. They won't step, stump you next time. So, hey, if somebody wants to reach out to you guys, what's the best way to do that? Uh, go to convoyhomeloans.com and uh, you can click on one of Dustin or my profile and uh, you'll be able to reach us. Sounds good. All right, guys. Hey, thanks a lot. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. 